Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Uri May, I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Hunters. And today we're gonna to talk all about how you can take your existing Falcon logs from your existing cloud stack deployment and transform them into an extended detection and response play. We'll start by talking about Hunters, the company and the mission we set out to change in the world. And then we'll continue to a real world incident that we were able to uncover in a real customer environment, leveraging Falcon logs and detecting a breach into the cloud environment. Um, we'll then fall around to talk all about the technology behind the scenes that allowed us to correlate all the different uh, data sources from the different variety of products that allowed us to uncover that breach. We'll end up with some takeaways and I hope you find it interesting. Few, few kind of facts about myself. Uh, again, my name is Uri May. I'm a veteran officer of Unit A200, part of the Israeli Defense Forces. I was a former co-founder and CTO of a high-frequency trading firm called Maximize. And even though we call the company Hunters, I'm a vegetarian. Hunters was built um, and the mission behind the company is to create an impact and change the way customers and organizations around the world are handling detection and response workflows. Taking it from a process that is mainly human-led and siloed into an holistic one that is led by machines. We're trying to automate decision-making processes instead of just plain automation and to incorporate and engineer domain expertise from our background and from the community background into a technology that could be scalable throughout customer organizations. We believe that only through the scale of knowledge and domain expertise, we can actually create a difference and um, be able to attack the attackers or cope with, with our ever evolving techniques and tactics that they're using. So when we talk about domain expertise and when we're talking about knowledge in the field of cybersecurity, we separate it into four different pillars. And the understanding that we had in the architecture of the, of the technology behind the company is that only by combining these four pillars of knowledge, we will actually be able to create something that is impactful. The first pillar, which is very straightforward, is understanding the techniques, tactics, and procedures that attackers are using, but also to be able, be able to develop the infrastructure and the scalable technology that can take those understanding and engineer it into an into a analytical a, a engine that can actually run in customer's environment. The second thing is the organizational context. Without understanding the terrain, without understanding the actual network that we operate in, we have no chance of really be able to differentiate between malicious and benign activities. And for that, we automatically analyze, but also allow human input for um, pieces of knowledge and information like crown jewels, important assets, sensitive assets, domain controllers, external facing servers, etc. And the idea is that through engineering all of that into the data set that we operate on, we can deliver much better results. The third pillar is threat intelligence. And this is pieces of information and knowledge around the infrastructures that attackers and adversaries are using in the world nowadays. The ability to consume those feeds, but then to create actionable insights out of them and incorporate that into the rest of the pillars is something that we found super useful. The, port, the fourth pillar is actually detections and alerts from existing products that are already deployed in the system. We'll touch about it when we, in the next slide when we talk about architecture, but Hunter's, uh, uh, one of its biggest advantages is that it's able to sit on top of the telemetry stack. The telemetry stack is full with products that has millions of human hours invested in the research and the engineering behind them. And the alerts and detections that all, those products are generating are actually the knowledge of the vendors that built them. And we found that integrating and tapping into that stream of knowledge is, is priceless. And that leads us into the fact that we are all learning to understand, especially during COVID and especially during the work from home uh, uh, situation that we're at, is that the enterprise is everywhere. And without the understanding and domain expertise around correlating and connecting those different parts of the attack surface together, it's almost impossible to trace and track attack that is moving laterally between those pieces of the attack surface. Let's talk about um, a really relevant story that follows up directly with that notion that the enterprise is everywhere. So what you can see here is actually an output of hunters. 
this is a story. A story um, is a UI representation of um, an area of the, in the graph that the system automatically correlated. Our graph is incorporated from suspicious signals. A signal can be either an alert or a detection that either we generated using our uh, proprietary TTPs, or it was a custom TTP that was written by the, custom, by the customer, or it's actually a detection that was generated by a security product that we're integrating to. But the idea is that all of those suspicious signals and the entities, relationships, and results of automatic enrichments that we're doing are all loaded and kept on updated on that graph. And then the algorithms running on top of that graph generating stories just like this uh, um, and representing it in a way that is uh, human consumable, consumable, basically. So zooming in into this specific story, you can see that uh, what we have in front of us is a bridge that started in the endpoint with a malware detected and prevented by Falcon, but then moved to the enterprise in, uh, environment. And what we learned from here is that we probably had an, uh, an event of compromised credentials that was used by an attacker to access the production environment. Let's zoom in into the different phases and the different uh, signals that we automatically correlated here and extracted from the data. So the first thing that you can see is a very noisy signal, but it's a very helpful TTP, especially in cases like that. And, and that is around accessing cloud credential files. Each endpoint that has accessibility to an AWS environment usually has credential store on it um, under a very famous, uh, uh, very famous folder, .aws slash credentials. And those credential files are usually uh, um, the access key and the access token that is required to access the production environment to do maintenance or, or just accessing servers, etc. The idea is that we have an analytic that is monitoring suspicious processes accessing this file. 99% of the time, this doesn't mean anything. It's a super noisy signal. But in this case, it really helped us understand what was going on behind the scene. The next signal is actually a detection, an alert that was generated by Falcon. Falcon found that there was a malware executing after a, a malicious document, Excel document was triggered. And that malware was actually blocked and prevented by CrowdStrike. What we found out through the correlation with, with the CrowdStrike, uh, uh, between the CrowdStrike events and, and our triggers from, from our TTP is that before the malware was prevented and blocked, it, it probably had a chance to cut, cut that file or read the data from that file and transmit it into a, a, a suspicious or a malicious sorry, a, a CNC com, a, a server. And this is what you can see in the third um, signal, which is again, a classical hunting signal. We're basically using CrowdStrike raw events generated by Falcon Data Replicator uh, API to look for suspicious DNSs and suspicious uh, 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 requests um, that might lead to some kind of a malicious connection or a suspicious connection that uh, we can understand from that. Again, very similar to the first one, this is a TTP that is running on raw events. 99% of the time, it doesn't mean anything. We know that there is an inherent false positives around detecting and, and analyzing DNS queries. But in this case, again, it helped us understand that not only credentials were stolen, they were actually also exfiltrated. And now we also have another identifier of where it was exfiltrated to. Um, and that's, that's basically what happened on the endpoint. And now we're moving into another part of the attack surface, and that is basically the production environment in AWS. In the production environment in AWS, we have two very interesting signals happening independently, but correlating together and in the same time correlating in a very non-trivial way back to the enterprise. So what you can see here is that basically we saw VPC flow logs, a, a communication to Tor exit node. VPC flow logs, it's like the firewall logs of the AWS environment. It's the network level um, of, of the entire AWS account. And what you can see here is that uh, we saw an internal interface, elastic network interface communicating with a Tor exit node. We have an, a, a threat intel feed updating on, on, on their exit nodes and we're looking for suspicious communication to, to that. In an AWS environment, that is super interesting because it could uh, uh, help us understand if there's actually malicious exfiltration of data, maybe crypto mining or something like that that is happening in the, in the cloud environment. Um, and the next step that was really interesting is that 
around the same entity graph, around the basically EC2 identifier that was associated with the ENI that was associated with that IP. We also saw that someone is trying to disrupt uh, uh, and delete cloud relevance. And this is something that is very uh, uh, suspicious, right? It's like an evasion technique, technique. Someone is trying to delete his tracks and to cover his tracks. And the idea is that those tracks or that, sorry, evasion uh, uh, tactic was actually being done by the same Daniel Wilson that we know that was logged in into the same uh, CrowdStrike endpoint. We had the entire um, CrowdStrike story starts from. And our ability to take the Tor exit node communication, connect it and correlate it back automatically to the CloudRail disruption event, and then take these two activities and correlate it based on the person and the identity that done that into the uh, endpoint, allowed us to understand that Daniel Wilson didn't really do it. Someone stole his credentials and then accessed the cloud environment, exfiltrated data, or done something with that has a, a, a bad reputation associated with it because it was done to a tour node, and then also try to cover its tracks. This entire story changed the way we were looking on that malware infection. And instead of thinking about it as a malware that was detected and prevented, we now know that we have a compromised credentials on our hand and we need to operate completely differently. Um, so it's a, it's a really cool example of how domain expertise and specific understanding of the different attack surface could be really relevant and really useful for both incident response, but also automated threat hunting. And we'll touch more on those use cases in a second. And again, the idea is that knowledge, and not only knowledge as knowledge, but also the ability to automate and to scale knowledge is currently the missing piece and the key to really be able to deliver impact around extended detection and response uh, technology that are able to find and track attacks and breaches across different attack surfaces. Now let's talk a little bit about what's going on behind the scene and how the technology is being able to uh, um, automatically populate stories and graphs like the one we just see, we just saw. It all starts with the existing sensors layer. So we need data. Hunters is a system that sits on top of the existing telemetry stack. We don't integrate with all of the products, but we'll integrate with products across six product categories. And we chose leading vendors in each category. Obviously, CrowdStrike is a, a one, of that, a, one of those leading vendors in the EPP or EDR product category. Next, what we do is um, we allow customers to keep their, their uh, existing security analytics infrastructure. And basically, we are connecting into the data wherever it resides. We can connect directly into the vendor, like the integration we have with CrowdStrike through the CrowdStrike app that we have, that hunters have. But we can also have the data coming from sources like the SIM, or a cloud storage, or just any other types of, of, uh, um, of data location. We'll find it, and we'll be able to connect to it. And the idea is that we want to give customers the ability to integrate more and more uh, uh, um, data into the system. And the idea is that more data means, at the end, more interesting stories like the one we saw earlier. The next phase is to take all of those uh, data sources and telemetries and detections that we collected from the different products and transform them into knowledge. First layer is the detection layer, and that's a stream processing engine that is a proprietary one we developed it internally, and it extracts the detections and alerts, entities, relationships, and every piece of information that we can find that can help us populate that graph that we mentioned earlier. Then all of that uh, 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 structured data is being loaded into a graph and a set of automatic investigation models are running on top of it. Those investigation models are handling enrichments, contextualization, relationship building, scoring, clustering, and everything that is needed to make sure that that uh, 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 um, information is becoming knowledge that is actionable and can be uh, transformed into uh, insights either automatically or by a human being manually investigating the graph and traversing the graph. On top of that graph, like we said earlier, there is an ongoing management activity uh, um, that is about training and learning the graph more knowledge and more uh, uh, capabilities. This is done both by our team 
that's the age on the right, but also by the customer's analyst that has the opportunity to develop more TTPs, develop more entities definitions, drill downs and automatic investigation models, and eventually make this uh, uh, thing uh, better as time progresses. And then on top of that knowledge layer, there are multiple use cases uh, 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 that we drive. The first thing is automation of threat hunting and in general scaling threat hunting and the ability to take noisy uh, TTPs and hypotheses of attack and correlate them to basically find things that bypass existing security control. The other use case, and that correlates really well with what we just, we just saw earlier, is really understand what happened. So take incidents that we have in the system and expand the context around them, expand the situational awareness that an analyst is getting about them and understand that a malware that was in the endpoint might actually have an immediate effect on the cloud environment. And it, the same can go with the correlation between IoT devices and the endpoint, SaaS environment in the endpoint, production environment and email, and you name it. And the last use case is to really be able to scale and change the way we're doing real-time triage now for alerts and this is again something that we're able to deliver really nice results using all of that knowledge representation layer that we've talked about earlier and using all of that uh, information that was transformed into the graph uh, um, and that can really help us score and prioritize the different alerts that, uh, that analysts are handling. And just to wrap it up and kind of like bring it down to where to the CrowdStrike world and, and for what it means for a CrowdStrike customer, so the ability to take Falcon data replicator raw data and extract hunting signals from it. Doesn't matter if it's our proprietary uh, um, signals or it's custom signals that, are, uh, um, that the analyst uh, uh, or the teams and the customer developed. Uh, the idea is that you can take it, automate that hunting process, automate the correlation and contextualization process and eventually get out uh, 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 stories out of the system that can really highlight things that you, that you couldn't detect earlier. Second thing is about incident response. Take out like detections and correlate it with, in, with detections and, and, and activities and suspicious activities that are happening in other attack surfaces. And same goes the opposite way. Take detections from the email or from the cloud or from other places and correlate it back with context that we were able to extract using the crowds like integration. And the last thing is both use crowds like data to prioritize other alerts, but also use all the data that we have available to prioritize and contextualize a, a crowd strike alert to expedite triage and make sure that we're not missing anything there. To wrap everything up and kind of like the most important takeaway from my perspective is just to demonstrate how feasible everything is and how concrete everything is and how everything is very close to where you are now. And basically as a customer, as a crowd strike customer, you have the opportunity to install hunters on top of your CrowdStrike data with just a couple of clicks. We have an app, it's available through the CrowdStrike store, and you can basically log in into your Falcon admin, go to the store, install hunters, we'll automatically spin up a portal and connect the CrowdStrike data to our SaaS deployment. We'll open up a tenant for you and you'll have the opportunity to start connecting more data sources. The more data sources you'll connect, the better stories and results that you'll generate. And obviously, as we'll start this process together, we'll jump on a call and we'll see how we can take this technology and adjust it in the best way to your uh, uh, use case. And uh, we're really excited to, to work with you all. Um, and we see crowds like customers as, as our kind of like, uh, I don't know, sweet spot or uh, customers that we would really like to help uh, um, rev, rev amp and, 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 and uh, improve their detection response capabilities. So, we're waiting for you in the store. And if you have any questions um, or any kind of uh, uh, comments or feedback on the presentation or the technology that we're building, feel free to reach out either on LinkedIn or through the email. Um, this is my personal email that is written now on the screen. We'd love to hear uh, um, all of that uh, feedback and comments. Um, and obviously if anyone has any question, also feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Um, and last, one last request. Please fill the survey uh, at the bottom of the screen and at the end of the presentation. It would be um, really tremendously helpful for us just to understand how we can get better uh, for other conferences and also for the next Falcon. Continue enjoying the content that uh, you have here and uh, I'm looking forward to continue the conversation. Thank you.